Hello everybody. My name is Jamie Orsburn and I am my business is My Back Porch and I am here today to do a video for Amy Howard and we are going to be working with uh, the Toscana Milk Paint and I am going to create today a replica of a finish that I saw at Round Top which is a awesome flea market sale that is absolutely huge down in in between Austin and Houston and it's called Round Top. This is one of my favorite places to go to see the most unique things, the most beautiful antique painted furniture. And one of the things that we have learned is that the Toscana milk paint is one of the, well, it is a, mm, let me see how to describe it. A lot of furniture from the past has been painted with milk paint. So to replicate that look, we use exactly the same thing that they have used, and then we will antique it a little bit to make it look a little bit more used. And this is my absolute favorite finish, hands down. I love it, it's not hard to do, and I wanna show you how to do it right now. So I'm calling it my round top copycat finish. So I can't wait for you guys to see what I do. So let me turn this camera down and let me show you what I can do. Okay, first of all, we are going to mix the milk paint. I'm using a mixture of Amalfi Coast, Scandinavian Gray, and also a little bit of our Champagne Yellow. So these are the colors that we're gonna mix. And I have already pre-mixed them uh, a couple days ago. And this one right here is a mixture of the Amalfi Coast and Champagne Yellow. So you can see how it has, it's a little bit, well here, this one is straight Amalfi Coast. This one has the Champagne Yellow mixed in it. So you can see the difference of the colors right away. So we're gonna add some water to this one. Our next color we're doing is the Amalfi Coast with Scandinavian Gray. So you see that difference? It's made it a little bit different. It's got more gray in it. So we're gonna mix all three of these with water. I like to mix, well, it's going to be basically one-to-one -one milk paint to water. You want it to be nice and runny so I like to mix these up. Looks like I didn't put enough water in this one, but that's okay. We'll go ahead. See, I'm mixing this up. It looks a little thick. You see how thick that kind of looks? So I'm gonna add a little bit more water, but first of all, I'm just gonna go ahead and get it mixed up. Part of the reason we're mixing it is we have all of that pigment that we are trying to mix into the water. So I'm gonna stir it for just a little bit and then I want it to sit. So let's do the Amalfi Coast and the Scandinavian Gray. Now, if you notice, when we add water, these colors change some, they get darker. But when you paint them on and you dry them, or, or the paint dries onto the piece, it goes back to the color it was when it was dry. So when you look at one of these bags, the color you see of the milk paint in its dry form is the color that it's going to be when it dries again. So it makes it perfect for mixing colors because once you add the water, the color changes. But if you uh, mix the color before you add the water, you're gonna know what color you're gonna have. They all need just a little bit more water these, I had a whole lot more milk paint in than that first one. Okay, so let's get those mixed. I'm going to let them sit for a little bit, and then I will come right back, and we will start our process of our copycat finish. And I'll see if I can find you guys a picture of the finish that we're talking about, and we'll see how close we got. Without looking, I'm not going to look. This is something back when I was doing the Amy Howard at Home um, Old World Finishing. I submitted a picture to our Facebook group 
and everybody was trying to kind of guess what colors you would do to make this uh, copycat finish. So I've written this down and I haven't ever done it before. So this is a total experiment on my part too. So let me let these set and I'll get ready and we'll come back and I will show you how I'm doing this. Okay, we are back. I forgot to tell you that before I do the Toscana Milk Paint for the Old World Finish, I really, really like to use this Crack Gesso because it gives it an underlying white color because back then they used um, <clears throat> gesso, they used a Venetian plaster, they used some sort of a white substance to create a lot of the details that come in this. Instead of carving out wood all the time, they could use plaster and the plaster would carve easier and then they could it would dry really hard. They could paint right over the plaster. That's why you see a lot of chips and underneath it's white. So what we're doing is we're replicating that by using the gesso. The gesso comes in powder form as well. This is my, I just used a bunch of it. So this, it's white. You mix it. I mix it one to one, the same as the, um, the Toscana milk paint. So I've mixed it. I've already stirred it up. You do need to be careful that you don't whip it because you get lots of bubbles and the bubbles don't look great when you're fixing this piece. So I've already painted a couple. I've pre, pre done that, but I thought I would just show you real quick. It's just, it, oh, that stick keeps getting in my way. Put it aside. Okay. So I'm just painting this on. You don't have to act like you're painting a fancy piece because you're gonna have brush strokes because you won't. You wanna get this gesso on, spending a little extra time on the details because you want it to get everywhere in those. Now these are just little sample boards. I like to make these and then that way when I have somebody that wants to see the finishes that I can do, I don't have to drag around a piece of furniture with me. I can just take some of my samples and bring the samples with me and show everybody what I could do with this. Okay, so there we go. I like to, I don't like to brush it on. I kind of, you can use a seawool sponge, but I kind of like to brush it on and then just give it a little texture because when it dries, it's gonna dry with this crazy texture. And you see how I don't have brush strokes. I've kind of, uh, brushed it. I did two coats here because I accidentally made it just a little bit thin. So two coats works. So we're going to set that aside to dry and we will start on our whew, exacto knife. We're going to start on our first coat, which was, does everybody remember? It's the Amalfi Coast and our Champagne Yellow. So we'll pull one of these out. So it's sat for a little bit. Um, all of the pigment and everything has now gone to the bottom. So I want to stir it again and get it nice and mixed up here. And then another trick when you are painting, now let's see, I can go ahead and use the gesso. I get it in there. Reuse paint brushes. But when you're doing that, you want to go in and you want to stir it and go from the bottom because a lot of the pigment is down there. So here is our first coat. So I'm just painting this on. I'm doing it rather gently because I don't really want to do a big brush stroke and wipe all of my gesso off. Again, this is a lot like milk paint is so forgiving. There's not brush strokes, it settles down it looks beautiful. Of course, that's my favorite color. So we'll get this on here. And then we're going to let it dry. And then I will start on my next coat. My next coat is going to be the Amalfi Coast 
and the Scandinavian gray. So this is different. I will probably use a seawool sponge on this one so I get some different texture than what I've got down below. So I'm gonna dry this and I will be right back. I don't think you wanna see me dry it forever. It does dry pretty quickly. My favorite part of it drying is when it changes colors and it goes right back to that color it was when it was dry. So let me get this dried and we'll do the next one. Okay, well for time's sake, we're gonna go ahead and go ahead. See these places here where the color is a little bit darker? It's probably still just a little bit damp, but I'm gonna go ahead, actually it may be down underneath, but that's also where the paint got on a little thicker, kind of puddled. So I like this variation of color a lot. So now I'm gonna take the Amalfi Coast and the Scandinavian Gray, and I've already done it a little, and I'm just gonna dip, this is a seawool sponge, okay? I'm just gonna dip it in here, I've just stirred it. So again, make sure that you keep it stirred up. And I'm gonna now apply this color. You see the different color? See how it's variation? Well, I like the way the seawool sponge applies it because number one, I kinda like it to be, oh, I don't know, a little grody, a little, uh, well, you don't want to say speckled, but it just looks aged. It doesn't look brushed on. I just love the way it looks. And with these samples, I do like to do the edges because when you have a piece of furniture, you don't just stop on the edge. So there we go. I've done that. Now we're going to dry this and then we'll do our last coat, which is just a straight Amalfi Coast. So let me dry this real quick. It should dry pretty quick because it's already warm. Now, honestly, I would not suggest blow drying your finishes when you're making it on furniture, but since I'm trying to show you all of this, I wanna show you and make the video quick enough so you can see how to do it. You can come back and watch it, but I would suggest letting each coat of um, the milk paint dry. Uh, it'll probably dry in about 30 minutes to an hour. So just let it dry on its own. Um, I'll show you. Well, let's see. I already covered it up. But if you go and you just hold it right down. Okay, you see that cracking? You see that cracking that's starting to happen? This is part of what milk paint does. This is okay. This I like this. That's why it's called cracked gesso. Okay. So I'm gonna dry just a little bit more. Where's that? There it is. So that we can do our next coat on this, okay? Let me get this dry. And then we'll come back just with our Amalfi Coast. Okay. So this is our Just Straight Amalfi Coast and you see how everything's pooling down to the bottom. So I'm going in, I love this color. This color just kind of reminds me of the ocean when I go to like places in the Caribbean or Mexico. Oh my goodness, I just absolutely love the colors of the ocean. So we've got this. I'm now going to take a little, well, let's see. No, let's do the, the um, I'm going to squeeze out the other paint. <clears throat> We'll use the other side. I'm gonna get my fingers all dirty. Now, I'm just gonna dip it in a little bit. Look at, oh, look at the color. Okay, so with this one, I'm not gonna put it on as much. It's gonna go on thinner. 
I am just very lightly dabbing this. I don't really want it to look speckled, but as it dries, it's not going to. So there, I think I'm good with that. Let's set that aside and quickly dry this and see what it does. The thing is, is we can always add more. We're getting all kinds of pretty blues in this. Hopefully there are enough difference that we can tell. If not, we'll have a pretty blue piece. <laughs> I did start this out with a, um, a really light colored stain. So I didn't want a dark stain to come through. I wanted the light color to come through. All right, that's already dry. So it went, here's one that I did. <clears throat> and I haven't done the Amalfi Coast on this one. You see the difference already in these two? This was the gray, this was the gray one. Let's dry this a little bit more so you can see the difference already in the colors. I think this one is more grody looking and this one is nice and smooth. But you see the difference in the colors here? And of course it's still wet, but as it's drying, we have all kinds of different colors here. So the next couple of steps are super easy. I'm gonna have to go get me another sea wool sponge that's not covered with paint. So let me come right back and I'll show you the next couple of steps that are real quick and easy. Okay, we've got this all dry. I'm sorry, I'm making a huge mess here, y'all. Oh, this must be something. Um, so I have this. What we're going to use is we're going to use our um, antiquing gel. Or let's see, antiquing glaze. I always say gel, but it is not gel. So this is our antiquing glaze right here. And I'm just going to pour, I don't need a whole lot. So I'm just going to pour a little bit in. And then I'm going to make what we call a bath. And the bath is literally for our seawool sponge. That's so we can clean off some of the paint that we end up end up picking up from that. So my seawool sponge right now is nice and dry. So I'm gonna get it wet by dipping it in my little bath. And it looks like I have cleaned the sponge. That's a good thing. I have one that, oh, I think I need to go clean it really bad. Go put it in some ocean water. That's what I need to do, go to the ocean. So I am going to use this, but first of all, I want to take this and let's see if I can do this without making it look like I've, I'm just gonna splatter some dots on there. These are gonna dry and I'm gonna dry them. These will dry and they're going to show up when it's all done as some um, little antiquing, I don't know, splatters. But I love the way it just really adds to it. So you see this is, this dries so fast. Okay, so now we're gonna come back and I'm going to dip my sponge into the antiquing glaze. I don't want a whole lot on there. And Let's see, I'm gonna mess these up. These are gonna move over here. We'll move, because I am right-handed. Okay, so I've got that on here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going kind of in a random, I'm not going back and forth like this. I'm just random going over these. Oh, and by the way, this was that one that didn't have that last coat of just the plain Amalfi blue. So I thought we'd do it too and just see how it ends up. Since I've doing just a little sample, why not have two samples, right? So I'm going in here. You get the whole thing basically damp, and then you come back, and this is where you start removing. So see how I'm getting some of the paint on there? I'm using this as a negative tool instead of a positive tool. So a positive tool would be when you're painting the milk paint on. As a negative tool, I'm removing some of our milk paint. I don't wanna forget my sides. 
and it may look like you're taking off a lot or not a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna clean this off because I don't wanna just spread the milk paint around. I wanna use this antiquing gel, or glad, there I go again, antiquing glaze. And I just really want it to look very random. I'm kind of doing like a twist and pull. I'm not scrubbing, I'm not sanding, and this is really the best way to get those neat, awesome looks of old world miniature furniture. Bleh. So here, let's try it again. I'm going to clean this off. See how much paint we got in that? Okay, so we're going to go and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to antique this. Now, no sample is going to be exactly alike. Now you see those spots where the uh, cracked gesso was cracking up from the heat. It comes up, but you see how you've got, oops, we've got it puddling there. You see how we've got the white and we've got all these different colors. You will see all the different colors when this dries. And you're gonna think that, um, oh no, I've taken off too much. But when you do like the Scandinavian type of furniture, there's the, the light stain comes through. Oh, I forgot to get that. There we go. So I'm just gonna work this. Oh, I really like this one. I just like the way the cracked gesso is coming out. Of course, I'm getting fingerprints all over this, but it's mine. Okay, we're done with that. So this one is already drying on me. Well, let's dry this real quick. Okay, look at these, look at the difference. This is the one where we stopped with the gray. This is the one where we came back over the gray with a little bit of the, a bluer Amalfi Coast. We already have two different colors here going, but look at all the variation in the colors. I absolutely love this. This one is turning out to be my favorite. Now, some of these are cracking and I love that because what does old furniture paint do? It has spots where it's cracked. So the next thing we're gonna do, which will occur really quickly, is we're going to do use our light antique wax. We're gonna come back with just a little bit of dark antique wax. And then we're gonna to top it off with just a little bit of the dust of ages. This goes super quick. Let me find my brushes. I have brushes that are specifically for my light and my dark. So the light wax is just it's very light. I love this. As you can tell, I use it all the time. We're gonna start with this one. It does, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, we'll just use this. I always like to offload because I don't like to have too much and that allows me to spread out the wax on my piece or on my brush here. So we're just gonna go in and lightly brush. Do you see how the colors are becoming even more vibrant here? And I can feel I have already covered that with our wax. So let me get just a little bit more. And we'll do this one. See how the colors changed here? They caught a little bit darker, a little bit richer. So we've got that. So we're gonna let it come to tack. Usually coming to tack is going to be, yeah, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. It depends upon how much you put on. Um, 
it comes to tack when it doesn't feel, it doesn't have that little bit of sticky to it. So once you get that done, then you can come back and you can use the dark wax. I don't go through this near as fast because look how dark that is. I mean, isn't that a yummy color? I don't know, it looks like we should be using this to polish our shoes, but no, we don't use this to polish our shoes. Just get, oh, just a little bit on here. This needs to go in my water. I don't need a blue sponge. Okay, so I'm gonna take that again, especially with your dark wax. You definitely want to offload it a little bit and spread that dark wax out. Now I haven't quite waited long enough for this to come to tack, but I'm just gonna really carefully do this. First of all, I like to go around the edge. It's kind of like creating a frame. And then I just am gently going over this just a little bit. Too much dark wax will ruin your piece. It's less is more. You can always come back and put just a little bit more on. You see how we go like this and our edges really stand out. So I like to do the edges. So we'll just do this. And I think there is still enough dark wax on here to do this piece. Well, maybe not. I don't put very much on here at all because I don't like to overdo it. So again, I'm gonna go around the edge to kind of give it that halo framed look. And then I'm just gonna gently brush. Now I'm not doing it real hard. I'm not doing it all in one place. It's very, it's just where I feel like it needs to go. Again, I'm framing it. I'm framing it. You see how that frames that? It just, and then you can come back and put a little bit on there. This is just adding that little bit of age. We're not going in and trying to change the color of everything. We just want a little bit of age on that. See how all of a sudden all of this cracking shows up because I've gone over it with this dark wax. Love this. Okay, so we have done that. We've done the dark wax and the light wax. I like to have a brush that I label. It says dark wax on it. And then the last thing we're gonna do is our dust of ages and I hate to dry I can't really dry it with a hair dryer because then that'll just melt the well that's not a hair dryer it's a heat gun but this is our dust of ages it just looks like I don't know gray dust except for that little dog hair there whoops so I take that and I'm just going to I like to do it like this that way I have a nice even spread of this dust. And then we're gonna go back in our houses and remove all the dust from our furniture, right? So I'm gonna move that. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna kind of pounce it in. Usually you want to wait just a little bit so that that dark wax just barely comes to tack. You don't wanna wait too long because this here, not only does it give us a nice little dust look, but you can go back and you can buff it. So you see how we've got that? Let's do this one. There's lots of places for that dust to accumulate into our little cracks here. We have a little crevice going here. Of course, we have all of these little cracks here. See, by dusting it off, look, I don't have that much extra. I'll wipe off some. And the last thing I like to do is clean up our workspace just a little, is I like to go and just, I'm not doing a solid buff here, but I'm going back just a little bit and what I'm doing is I'm just creating 
a little bit of buffing. It shines it up. It makes those colors stand out even more. It gives it just a little bit of a shine, a little bit of a patina there. And that piece is done. You see the difference here just a little bit? So we're gonna go in, we're gonna buff it. It cleans some of that off. Ooh, I like this piece. I like the grodiness of it, oh, where it's just cracking and it looks kind of like somebody left it in their barn. But we all know that this is not what it looks like when you leave it in a barn. So here we go. I've got these two pieces. You see the difference in color. This one is darker. This is the one that we just did the two coats. We did the Amalfi Coast and Champagne Yellow on both of these. And then we came back and did Amalfi Coast with Scandinavian Gray on both of these. But we stopped there on this one. On this one, we went back and just added just a little of the plain Amalfi Coast. So we have three different colors here. We have two different colors here. And we already had just a little bit of a difference. And I love this. And you know what? This looks really kind of close to that piece as I remember it. I went back and looked. I can't find it. It's probably too far back. I've archived it. But I love this. I love how the wood comes out. So I will take a picture of these so that you can remember the two differences. And I will show you all the products one more time so that you can see them. So we have Amalfi Coast, Scandinavian Gray, and Champagne Yellow. That's a really light yellow. We have, let's see, what are we doing? We have antiquing gel we started with our cracked gesso let's put that right here we have the light antique wax we have the dark antique wax and we'll put the lid on this so I don't spill any dust don't need any more than we already have there is our dust of ages all of that you saw how easy it was. There was no great artistry to it. It was just a lot of plodding along, throwing this stuff on, and we came out with some absolutely gorgeous samples. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you guys for joining me. I'm so glad you were here. Again, my business is my back porch, and I'm doing this for Amy Howard, and I hope that you guys are able to go and reproduce what I've done or take your own mixture of colors and come up with your own personal recipe for colors that you want to do on furniture. So God bless. Mwah. Bye.